Start your habit of continuous learning today. Visit nomadphp.com. Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10 minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Asmir, and he's going to be talking about deploying your PHP app with Docker. Asmir, take it away. Hi, Joe. Thank you very much. Uh... So uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to deploy your PHP application with Docker. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm, my name is Asmir Mustafic and you can find uh, all my contacts in this slide and uh, on my website you will be uh, also available this uh, presentation uh, so you can uh, have a second look after uh, this lightning talk. I also actively contribute to many different open source projects mainly related to PHP. But let's talk about the problem. Uh, the classical thing is we developer build our application on our local environment, but how to bring it to the outer world? In the past, we were using many different technology like FTP, SFTP, RSync, uh, or simple bash scripts, and many other strategies to move our application from our local computer to the web. But now, there are much more machines, many environments, many tests, many configurations that uh, we want to expose our, with our application, and things start to get much more complicated. But fortunately, uh, to help us, uh, there is, uh, in the last uh, a couple of years, a uh, tool that raised uh, called Docker. And Docker is uh, a tool that uh, automates the creation of containers and uh, how to distribute these containers across different uh, platforms. A container is basically a process with a limited uh, visibility on uh, the outer uh, part of the computer, let's say. And uh, the good thing that uh, Docker did for developers is dividing the application from the operating system dependency. So if we use Python for our application, we don't need to have this operating system supporting effectively Python because are two different things. But Docker is not just one tool, it's a set of tools uh, and of course one of these is Docker that is the foundation and it helps to create this container to distribute them. But one container generally is not enough. We have Docker Compose that is a tool to create multi-container application. Generally one container is for our PHP application, another container is for the web server, another container is for our database. Another interesting tool is Docker Machine. Essentially, Docker Machines allows you to create uh, instances of, uh, especially in the cloud, like uh, AWS instances, the DigitalOcean instances, to install automatically on them the Docker engine that later will be really easily possible to deploy our Docker containers directly on those instances. And another tool that is convenient for developers, this is not officially Docker, uh, is uh, Docker Share. Here there is a link on who wants to try it. Essentially, it allows to share Docker machine configuration between developers. Uh, that's because uh, there is not yet an established standard on how to share Docker machine con uh, configuration between different developers. And this is just one of the many solutions. But let's uh, go back a, a little bit. Uh, once we have created uh, our local environment uh, with Docker, and this is something that I always suggest to start uh, when we have to build a new application, uh, our, our simplest, the simplest way is to use Docker Compose, and this is an example script of Doc Docker Compose. Here we see a database uh, instance, a database container that in this case is just Postgres, um, a web instance, in this case is Nginx, we have also a PHP instance and uh, a data instance that essentially is where we store our uh, data. Now we are going to see in details each single of this container, how it's configured. Postgres, is, we are using the standard Postgres image, so there are no specific configuration, except of that the volumes is essentially where Postgres st stores our data. We map them between uh, the in-container directory that is Varli Postgres data PG data to the host folder, in this case I just chose by convenience in the local environment, uh, Docker data, PG data. But let's see something more interesting. Uh, in this case, the Nginx container is built uh, a bit ad hoc. Uh, yeah, 
in this case is uh, essentially we are just taking the official uh, Docker, uh, the, the official Docker Nginx image, and we are copying into the etc Nginx uh, folder our custom configuration that can be any of the standard configuration for Nginx. Our PHP container, again, we are using the standard uh, PHP container available on Docker Hub. We are customizing it a little bit, in this case, simply installing Composer and copying some custom PHP in it that uh, can configure our application with some settings a bit uh, more optimized for the app. And this is the data container that essentially keep, uh, has our source code. In this case, we are essentially copying the whole uh, current folder into the var www, and we are exposing this uh, folder through the volume command to other uh, containers. We will see later for what is useful. And uh, the data containers are currently maybe not one of the best option because Docker has deprecated. There are many other alternatives, but this is just one of the many ways to do it. Once we have these three files and the Docker Composer file, if we'll just run the command Docker Composer app, we have everything ready. We have our PHP uh, application, we have our Nginx, and we have our storage for the source code. And now we have just to build, test, commit, and repeat the whole uh, process till our application is not uh, good enough uh, to be shared with other people. Okay, once we have completed our process, how do we share our uh, work with other, uh, like how to put, we put it in production or example to staging or how to te we test it? This is the big picture of what we need to do. Essentially, we push our code to some VCS servers, can be GitLab, GitHub, uh, or many of the other possibilities. And later, uh, we will trigger a build that will create uh, the Docker images. These Docker images will be pushed to the Docker Hub, and later we can decide if deploying effectively these uh, Docker images to production or to some test environment or not. But now we'll go a bit uh, step by step in every part of the process. So as I said, we have to push essentially the code. Once we have created our local application, we have just to push it. Uh, can be that we are storing our uh, source code on GitHub, on GitLab, or, main, or uh, Bitbucket, or many other alternatives. Later, the VCS server will trigger a build. Um, most of the currently hosting, like GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab, uh, offer possibility to integrate uh, that once we push our code, they will trigger some operation. In this case, we will trigger a build by some C uh, continuous integration server as Trevi CR, Silco CI, Jenkins, or many other. And the responsibilities of the build are essentially to get the dependencies, to run the test, and to prepare the images. Uh, in this case, images are just uh, the Docker containers uh, that we will have to deploy po po uh, probably in production and of course to push them to the registry. The registry is just a storage where we save our uh, images. And of course later we can decide, this is an optional part, if putting those images on some test environment or even on production. The build is just uh, a relatively long list of bash commands depending on how complex is your build. In one of the simplest cases is uh, we have to run and the same way how we did uh, in development, we have to run on the continuous integration server, Docker Compose Alp, that will build essentially all our containers that are necessary. Later, we can uh, execute some custom commands that will configure a bit better our uh, containers. In this case, I'm installing the dependency via Composer on many other things like installing front-end assets or whatever we want. We can run some tests, in this case PHP unit or uh, whatever we want. And after we have done that, we have to push our images uh, to the Docker Hub. In this case, I'm just rebuilding all the data. I'm logging into the Docker Hub. That is one of the uh, possible registries and is the default in Docker. And with the uh, command docker compose a bundle minus minus push images. Uh, in that moment, I'm effectively pushing images from the continuous integration server to the Docker Hub. And essentially, that's all in the build phase. 
now as a next step we can decide or not uh, an app, uh, a deploy. Most of the time the deploy is a strategy to decide if trigger it or not is just based on a branch name or with some command uh, in the commit or can be even a manual operation depending on the continuous integration system that we are using. If we want to deploy we have to decide, uh, in this case we are using Docker machine, uh, we are going to create a new instance on Amazon and we call it AWS01. If the instance is not already available, if it's already available we can skip essentially that part. And with machine export AWS01 we are configuring the currently uh, running uh, continuous integration console to talk to the AWS01 instance instead of uh, running the command, the Docker commands on the continuous integration environment, we will run all the commands on the AWS01 instance. And now we have essentially the next commands that we will run on the continuous integration server will just pull the Docker images and will eventually de uh, deploy them on production. Let's go step by step. In this case I'm running a uh, Docker machine import 01. This is importing all the configurations uh, for the AWS 01 instance. With Docker machine env I'm effectively configuring this console to work on the AWS 01 instance. Export tag branch name I'm just deciding which uh, tag uh, or which version of our application I'm interested to deploy. Docker Compose app minus F and a couple of other things uh, is what is going to pull to download the images from the Docker Hub that I have uploaded on the step number three. And the last command, Docker Compose uh, app minus D, is what is going effectively to put uh, live our uh, application uh, in the version that I have this, uh, specified in the tag. One detail, all these commands are executed on the continuous integration server, but the effect is produced on the machine AWS01. This means that on the machine AWS01, we have effectively deployed our application. And that's all. In this step, we, have, uh, we went through the whole process of uh, from our computer we have pushed our code to the VCS server, we have triggered a build on the continuous integration server that has pushed our images to the Docker Hub and eventually we have decided to trigger an update of the live or, or the staging environment to download those images and to put them online, means on production. And as you saw in this case there was not really a big difference between putting them live or putting them on staging. The only thing that changes is the instance that we decide to uh, deploy our application. Probably some of uh, you have noticed that uh, I used a different Compose, uh, Docker Compose file. This is just because in this case we don't need all the information about how to build the image or and eventually we need slightly different path mappings because on live we will store probably the Postgres database in a different folder. And in this case there is, uh, as you can see, the tag uh, environment variable that was exactly uh, with this environment variable we are deciding which version of our application download. And uh, on the www container we are exposing the port 80 on the physical machine or again on the port 80, so our application is available through that port. There are, this is everything that we need to do. Then there are many other options uh, that we can run and probably we need. Some of them are how to run migrations because when we deploy a new application we might need to update our schema. This again is always done via uh, continuous integration server and all these commands are executed on the continuous integration server but the impact on them, of them is on the AWS01 instance. In this case we can, uh, with docker exec, we can uh, execute a specific command inside the docker container uh, to run some migration tasks. Another interesting tip to give is uh, that those Docker Im uh, images can become relatively big 
and if you want to make them slower, uh, smaller, you can exclude some of those files because probably not everything is necessary for the production environment compor uh, com uh, compared to the test environment like caches, logs or uh, the whole git folder where uh, are the information about version control. Another detail about, uh, this is more the syntax about the machine import and machine export, uh, is uh, that essentially with machine export we are saving the whole uh, Docker machine uh, configuration into a file that is a target Z, and with Docker machine import we are importing in our local machine the configuration from the file that we have saved before. We have deployed our application, but uh, that application had some small downtime and uh, there are many different strategies to avoid downtimes because doing just simply Docker uh, Compose app will tear down all our containers and we spin up new containers. There are many strategies to avoid this that most of the time is about creating a separate project, uh, in this case with minus P project up we decide which is the project that we want to pull up and with uh, project down we decide which project we want to pull down. This is one of the strategies to create this blue-green deployments, but here the topics uh, go a bit more complicated because we need to combine many other tools like Docker Proxy, uh, Nginx Proxy or Docker Gen. But since Docker is a really small piece and there are many other uh, tools that we need to connect to them, it's really easy to compose them and this is one of the big advantages about Docker. And of course, there are many other uh, advantages of that if our application needs to scale, there are some tools like Docker Swarm or Kubernetes that essentially having almost the same configuration for development, we can deploy our application directly onto a cluster of maybe 10 or 100 nodes with a really small amount of changes compared to our development environment. And Docker enabled us to go really faster from development to production and more often to put our code from development to production. And there are many, many other technologies that are really making uh, easier the life of our of us developers. From my side, that's all. Uh, the line goes back to you, uh, Joe. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com.